Welcome to the first set of tutorials for the Rapid Disk Suite. The Rapid Disk project comprises of two kernel modules and a set of user space binaries to help manage the creation and removal of uh, Rapid Disk RAM drives and also being able to attach those RAM drives as a front end caching node for slower media devices. Uh, today, we will be covering the installation and general usage of Rapid Disk. But first things first, how do we start or where do we start with Rapid Disk? And the easiest way to get to the Rapid Disk project and download it is to go to rapiddisk.org. What that'll do is that'll redirect you to the actual GitHub page of the project. And as you can see here, the project is structured just like any other open source project. Um, the readme that is at the uh, root of the project directory gives you a nice synopsis or summary of the rapid disk project and how to, uh, make use of it, where its advantages are and, and other examples, including, uh, building an installation, which is what we're going to cover in this, uh, the beginning part of this tutorial. Anyway, to get started, let's, uh, clone the rapid disk project. Let me create a, uh, development directory as a scratch directory. We will let me increase this screen size. We will clone the project repository. As you can see here, we have rapid disk clone from the GitHub repo. We will uh, change into that directory. And here we see the, the root of the, uh, the parent directory of the project suite. The easiest way to get started is running a simple make, but first things first, there are some prerequisites to installing uh, rapid disk. And as you can see in the readme right here, you will need to install both the libjanson and libmicrohttpd development files and libraries in order to both build and get uh, the user space binaries going. But you will also need to have the uh, Linux kernel headers and whatever kernel development uh, packages that are required with your Linux distribution to build the kernel modules. Moving back to the actual build process, assuming that you have all those prerequisites installed, the easiest way to get going is to run a make. As you can see here, we are traversing through each subdirectory and the make operation is executing. We've built everything. There are no errors. And then the, you run make install, assuming you want to install this and not run it uh, in the local project root or, or anywhere else. So we will run a make install. Again, everything's installing. We don't see any errors. Just waiting for this debt mod to, okay. So here we go. We have everything built and installed. Now we want to insert the, uh, the module. So let's mod probe rapid disk and rapid disk cache, which are the two modules that I had spoken about earlier, as you can see here, both modules have been inserted into the, uh, the kernel. And now we want to run the, the binary to, <clears throat> to, to add and remove, uh, Ram drives. As you can see here, the, the help gives you a pretty straightforward list of functions, usage, uh, examples and, and, and so forth. So if I want to add a Ram drive, the easiest way to do that is to do a minus a and in megabytes define the, the size that I want. 
So in this case, I want to add a 512 megabyte uh, RAM drive. Now I'm in a, on a very old system, so I don't have as much memory to, to make use of. You can create RAM drives in the gigabytes and in theory in the terabytes. But one thing you need to understand is the, 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 the RAM drive, the, the module is designed to be thinly provisioned. You can uh, define a, a RAM drive or create a RAM drive that is much larger than the system memory, and it'll actually create. And memory pages are allocated upon uh, request. So it's it's it, it's kind of a nice feature, but you also it can also be a very dangerous feature. So you don't you don't uh, want to <laughs> abuse it. Because as the as the RAM drive continues to fill, you're leaving less and less memory space for the kernel itself. And at some point, the system can, um, for lack of a better term, blow up. But anyway, uh, we have a 512 uh, megabyte RAM drive. I'll create another one that's 128. As you can see here, when we list the, the RAM drives, we see both of them listed here. And they are in, you know, a, a listed as block devices in the um, uh, dev uh, FS directory, uh, yeah, you know, subdirectory uh, file system. Uh, both of them are listed here. They're uh, block devices. You can also see the block devices in this block. Uh, just like any other black device. Anyway, moving on. So we have, like I said, our two uh, RAM drives. We can read to it, write from it, or I mean, I'm sorry, write to it, re read from it. Uh, let's, let's write some data to uh, dev rd1. Oops. Oh, OF. Okay, so we wrote 32 megs into RD1, and we can validate that we have written those uh, 32 uh, megs by just doing a simple hex dump. I mean, this is the data that we have written. If we move. Uh, if we if we try to read from the other device, it should read all zero because we haven't read uh, or written anything to it. Anyway, so now you can treat this uh, block device just like any other block device. You can write a file system and mount it. You can do just about anything with it. Another feature that Rapid Disk offers is being able to take that block device and mapping it as a front end cache, read cache to an underlying slower device. You can do that. Uh, with a simple command, sudo this, we want to map rd1 uh, to the backing store dev sde. Now, if we list, you'll see that we have a uh, rapid disk cache mapping. Um, now let's run IO to it or uh, by reading uh, by reading, um, uh, data from it now you will notice that the first read is just going to be at the same rate as the actual underlying block device and that's because it is not staged in memory yet in the actual cache so you'll see 211 megabytes per second okay you know that's not great but let's do it again now it's one gigabytes per second and that's because it's already staged 
this is um, you know yet another advantage to using this suite, uh, especially when it comes to a, a an I/O profile that requires a lot of reads and especially a lot of reads to the same files over and over again. Anyway, this was a um, a brief introduction into Rapid Disk installation and general usage. I hope that this was helpful. Stay tuned for uh, future installments. Until then, 